Hey, sounds like we've got a few people trickling in. Um, this is Katie from Michaels. We want to welcome you guys to today's class where we're going to be teaching you how to make a really awesome um, basket. And Tamara from Moogly is going to be walking us through step by step, kind of giving you guys um, all the instruction, tips and tricks, how to's. Uh, you'll see in the chat, we have added the pattern. If you weren't able to download it before you joined us today, make sure to go ahead and um, download that. And we'll be here for any questions that you might have. Ali is going to be kind of helping co-host and get your questions answered while Tamara is working. So don't be shy. Make sure to chime in and let us know if you're if you're stuck or you need help. Um, but we're excited to get started. Tamara, thanks for joining us. And everybody chime into the chat and let us know where you're from. Hey, everybody. Thank you so much to Michaels for having me. I'm so excited to be here today. I'm Tamara from Moogly, mooglyblog.com and I primarily design crochet patterns, but I do some other crafts too. And of course, you know, go to Michael's for all their awesome supplies. So the project I wanna share with you today is one that I designed for my blog using Yarn Inspirations Bernat Blanket. Totally available at Michael's. It's an awesome yarn. Um, if you haven't worked with it before, it is a real treat. It's a chenille style yarn. You can see here, it is definitely one of the thicker yarns, a nice bulky, actually a super bulky, a number six, and so you can use a big hook and get a great project done in a relatively short amount of time. And you can see how great and squishy this yarn is. So what I've made with this yarn that I wanted to share with you today, and you should have gotten, like I said, the PDF in your email. If not, check the chat. It is the button up basket. And this is a really fun and unique project. Um, it definitely uses less than a skein, so it's great for your odds and ends, but it also uses four large buttons, you can see here. Any style, of course, you want, as long as they're big enough. Um, and the really cool thing is that the buttons aren't just decorative, they are functional. So if I unbutton them, you can see the whole basket actually, oops, I missed a couple more spools here. It's just such a really fun construction. And I found after I made it, everybody who's made it, you just start playing with it, you just button it and unbutton it like crazy. So you can see it all unbuttons into a flat piece. So it's a great beginner project with some really cool effects. Then you just put those buttons right through the holes and it becomes a basket. So I know right now everybody's staying home, but for people who do craft shows and things like that, this can be a great piece if you want something for storage that you can put away and lay flat when you're not using it. Just button it up, get a cool look. It is just a really fun project. So to make this, like I said, we're going to use the Bernat blanket and you'll need a US eight millimeter, or L usually, but it's an eight millimeter. So don't depend on the letter for this one. Look at the millimeters, you want an eight millimeter hook. And then, like I said, four buttons. Uh, the buttons I used were 44 millimeter, which is one and three quarters inches. Uh, yes, I have to check my notes for that, <laughs> for sure. Um, but yeah, I wanted to point out too, one thing about the buttons real quick, since a lot of us are staying at home right now, these buttons I bought, way before I made this project. And after I bought them, I didn't like them anymore. Let me show you the back of these buttons here. They actually have the design on the back and what's showing on the outside is the back side of the button. So just an idea, if you've got some buttons that you don't love, turn them over. See how the other side looks. Maybe give them a coat of paint. Really fun way to reuse your buttons that you know have been sitting in your stash unused for a while. So let's go ahead and get cracking on the pattern. I'm gonna go ahead and pull my label off. Always exciting to open a brand new skein of yarn, right? And then I'm going to just go ahead and pull out some yarn. Now, let's talk about this for a minute. A lot of people like to center pull from these balls. I'm a big fan of pulling from the outside. Why? I hate tangles. And I find I get less tangles if I pull from the outside, but that's just me. So you can pull from whatever part of the skein makes you guys happy. Um, once again, if you're looking for the pattern, it should be in the chat and you should have an email. So let's go ahead. I'm going to find my end again here now that I've pulled up all my yarn and we'll go to the overhead camera so I can demo how to make this. Hey, Tamara. Oh. Um, Allie yep. here. I just had a, we had a question come through. Sure. Um, so Nancy, all she could find was a 5.75 hook and she okay. wants to know if she can make that work. Um, you might try going down to, I'm going to say, if you have a uh, number five bulky laying around, try that. Um, just to give this pattern a try, that might work a little bit better with that hook size. Um, you know, so if you had like Red Heart Gemstone or I'm trying to think of some of the other bulkies off the top of my head. 
um, soft essentials, things like that, that might work a little bit better, a slightly thinner yarn. Um, but otherwise, you can definitely give it a try. You might just have to tug a little bit bigger on those loops as you crochet. All right. Okay, so like most patterns, we're going to go ahead and start with a slip knot on our hook. And the way I like to do that is to just loop my yarn over, bring that loop behind, and then get my hook right under that loop there. There we are. So just a simple average slip knot. There we are. You want to make sure you leave a few inches there so you can weave that end in when you're done. And then we're going to start by chaining 12. So we're just going to one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and twelve. And one thing I want to point out about this yarn and chenille style yarns, sometimes you have to give a little extra tug on that loop. The, there's so much texture you can see here in the yarn that it can make uh, the loops want to stay real close. So always make sure that you're pulling up your loops nice and high like they normally would be with maybe a slicker yarn. Then we're going to skip the chain closest to the hook and we're going to single crochet in each remaining chain across. Now one note about this, I will say most of the time when you see people crochet, they're going to crochet under those top two loops. I'm personally a big fan of working that first row into that underneath third loop. Let me hold it up a little closer to the camera here. Right there, the one that's underneath. You've got the top V there, and then you've got that underneath loop. By working into that loop there, then your finished edge is going to have that gorgeous V on the outside. Makes it way easier to work into later. Once again, I am using a USL eight millimeter needle. So I'm going to skip the chain closest to my hook. And like I said, I'm just going to single crochet in each remaining chain across. So if you haven't single crocheted before, you just go into that loop, pull up another loop with your hook, yarn over, and pull through both those loops. And if you're a knitter, please note that with crochet, we usually yarn over, not under. I think that's where a lot of people get mixed up between crocheting and knitting. One you yarn over and the other one you yarn under. Of course, that's typically. There's always exceptions with special stitches. But we're just going to continue single crocheting across. So like I said, let us know where you're tuning in from, what you guys are doing, what crafts are you guys working on right now to keep you busy? Um, it's a stressful time and I know crafts are helping me deal with it and they're helping a lot of other people deal with it. And um, I know my Michaels is doing curbside pickup, which has been super helpful. So definitely let us know what you guys are working on too here. So I've just gone all the way across here. I've got my 11 single crochets across, and then we're going to do that for eight more rows. So we'll go ahead and do that together here. We'll chain one to begin our next row and then single crochet across. Hey, Tamara, uh, Sean only has a seven millimeter hook and a nine millimeter hook. Which one would you suggest she should work with? Ooh, um, well, I'll tell you what, Sean, it you would have to answer this question for yourself. When you make projects, if you do make a gauge swatch and measure gauge, are you usually a little too tight or are you usually a little too loose? I would say if you find that your stitches tend to be a little too tight, then go for the bigger one. If you find that your stitches usually tend to be a little too loose, then go for the smaller one. Um, I think the smaller one, if you, know, if you find that you're usually right on gauge for this project, I'd probably go with the smaller one. Uh, just because with a basket, you do want a slightly tighter fabric. You don't really want something very loose. So I hope also, that answers. <laughs> yeah, that, that, that is perfect. Um, yeah. Also, there's a couple people who join late. Um, so if they, they see you um, stitching along right now, mm -hmm. um, what did they miss at the start? Just if you could briefly sure. catch them up. No problem. What we're making is the button up basket right here. You can see the overhead shot. It's got some fun buttons around it to help connect it. Um, hopefully there is a PDF file there in the chat for you to download so you can follow along with the written pattern. Right now, we're starting at the base. This is what we're making right now, the square that's at the bottom of the basket. So what I've done is I chained 12. I skipped the chain closest to the hook and single crocheted in each remaining chain across. So that gives us a row of 11 single crochets. Then we need to keep working in that row so until we have nine rows of single crochets with 11 stitches each. So this is just the little square that goes right at the bottom of our basket. So they're just sing simple single crochets worked in rows. We go into our stitch, yarn over, pull up our loop, 
yarn over and pull through both those loops to make a single crochet. So we just single crochet on across. This part is pretty simple, but it's one of my favorite ways to start baskets and bags, uh, tote bags, all sorts of projects. I really like making a simple rectangle at the bottom, and then I work all the way around the rectangle or the square or whatever that shape is, and then I can work the sides up, but it just gives a really nice solid base. And you can adjust the size relatively easily if you're starting a new project, making up your own. You don't have to do some of the crazy math that's involved in say an oval or you know, one of the other more mathy shapes. Working in simple rows to make a square or rectangle is generally one of the first skills a crocheter learns. So we're just gonna expand on some of those skills today. And I do have a couple of really cool stitches that I'll use as we make the sides of the basket. Now, you'll notice I gave it a little tug there. I've noticed when I crochet with this yarn too, sometimes it wants to get a little tight like that, but I find if I just give it a little tug, it straightens right back out. You can see we've got a great square, no blocking needed. So I'm just gonna continue single crocheting across until we've got our nine rows here, and then we're ready to make the sides. Were there any other questions? I guess right not. Right now, um... I think there's a couple people who just said that they have meetings that they have to hop back into. Uh, um, so they'll be watching later. So we just want to remind everybody that this class will be recorded. So you'll be able to watch it afterwards. Um, and maybe if you can on this next row, just show a couple single crochets a little bit slower. There are a few beginners that I think said they'll just be watching it back so I think it'd be great if we could just show them a couple slow stitch single crochets. Absolutely no problem. So when you begin a row of single crochet generally speaking you're going to chain one. That's going to be your turning chain. It doesn't count as a stitch for the row itself. I like to chain before I turn. Some people turn and then chain. Totally up to you however your hands like to do it. Then because that chain one does not count as a stitch we're going to start by crocheting right in that first stitch of the previous row. This is again, specifically for single crochets. So you just want to go under both of those top two loops with your hook, yarn over with your yarn, pull that loop through the stitch. Now you've got two loops left on the hook. So you yarn over and pull through both of those loops to make a single crochet. Now that chain one was just to begin the row. We don't need to chain one again before we begin the next stitch. We can just go straight into the next stitch with our hook, yarn over, pull that loop through the stitch with our hook, yarn over again, and pull through both of those loops. So that's what we're just doing right now. Just simple single crochets, pull up that loop, and pull through both of those loops. You should have 11 stitches in each row. And if you are a beginner crocheter and you find that your rows are losing stitches or gaining stitches, that is a very, very common problem uh, when you are learning how to crochet. In fact, I would say keeping those sides straight is probably, you know, after learning how to actually make the single crochet and maybe the double crochet, the biggest skill that a lot of crocheters have to tackle. Because it is really easy to lose a stitch, especially when you're a beginner and you haven't yet learned how to read those stitches and recognize them by looking at them. So I wanna share a quick tip for that too. These are some uh, stitch markers and they come in a variety of sizes. I like this particular kind, but of course, whatever kind works for you. And if you don't have stitch markers yet, you could use um, safety pins or a little bit of scrap yarn, whatever works for you. But what I like to do when I'm having trouble or I've got a really wide project with a crazy stitch or if you're a beginner and you just want to make sure to mark your stitches, if you mark the very first stitch of each row as you make it and then you come back across, you can do it again with the last one too if you want, although I just made that one so I'm pretty sure I know where it is. We'll start this next row with a chain one, turn, and single crochet across, but after I finish this first stitch, of this row, that's where I'll go ahead and put my stitch marker in on this row. And then I will just move those up as I go across. So I'll go ahead and add those here for our next few rows. But what this does, it, it marks that first and last stitch of the row. So it's just easier to find it. You won't accidentally end up skipping it and stopping right before it. Uh, you won't be asking, well, gosh, was that the last stitch or do I need to work into something over here? 
this way with a stitch marker, you always know which is the first and last stitch of that row. It works great for working in rows. It's really great for working in the round because working in the round, it can be very easy. Uh, for those of both who've given that a try, it can be very easy to accidentally work into a slip stitch that you joined your round with. So having that first and last stitch marked will make it a whole lot easier to find those as you come across. So you can see here, we're almost at the end of this row. So then I know this is my last stitch. I know I don't wanna work into that side. I know I'm not done. So I can work right in there. I'll need to pull up a little bit more yarn here. There we go. And then I can move that stitch marker on up to this stitch if I wanted or since I'm about to crochet into it again, I can just set it aside and make that first stitch. Remember again, we wanna start with a chain one at the beginning of each of these rows, make that first stitch and pop that stitch marker right back in there. So generally speaking, they say if you're just starting to learn to crochet, it's a good idea to count your stitches each row. But of course, if you're making something like a blanket, or a larger project with a lot more than 11 stitches, you're probably not going to want to count those every time. So you should do it every few rows for sure, but these stitch markers will help bridge that gap and get you crocheting a little bit faster. So let's see, we are almost at the done end of here of this row. So since I've been chatting, I'll have to stop and count how many rows I have. We can do that together here. So again, if you're a beginner crocheter, you will need to learn eventually how to read your stitches, but you can kind of see how there's a break here. You can almost see the horizontal stripes. And each of those typically, when you're working in rows, especially in single crochet, that's two rows right there. One worked in one direction and the other one worked the opposite direction, back and forth. So I can see here, I have worked two, four, six, eight rows. So let's do those again here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight rows have been made. So I'll go ahead and move this starch marker out of the way here, we're done with that. And then I can work our ninth row, which is the final row for the bottom of the basket. Once again, I'm just gonna chain one and turn and then single crochet in each stitch across. I can go ahead and put the stitch marker back in here if I want to, but this is our last row before we make the next round where we really start working those sides. So I'll just continue to single crochet across. Oops. Did we have any other questions, Allie? Um, just a few questions uh, in the chat about where to find the pattern. Um, you should see a PDF uh, uh, linked in the chat uh, from me, Allie W. So if you are having trouble finding the uh, the pattern, just uh, let us know and I can also reply to you directly. Um, but there's the pattern should be in the chat from Ali W. Uh, there's also some questions again about where to, um, about where they can find this video. Um, and you'll be able to find it, the video tomorrow on michaels.com forward slash classes, uh, which is also linked in the chat here. So we'll remind you a couple times as the class goes on, but uh, those are a couple questions there that I figured I could go ahead and answer. Okay, great. Thank you. Um, um, I, there's one question about how stiff should the basket be? So I guess that's a question about how tight should they be crocheting? I think that's a great question that some people might have trouble yeah. with. That is a great question. And of course, with a basket, generally speaking, of course, there's always exceptions. Generally speaking, you want a really nice solid fabric. So my rule of thumb, especially for this one, is it shouldn't be so tight that it's uncomfortable. You shouldn't be struggling to pull the hook through your fabric, but you definitely don't want to be able to see through it. So here, let me go ahead and I think it'll be a little easier on our swatch here to see. You can see I can't see my hand through it. There's not any big gaps, but at the same time, I can easily work my hook through it. It's not overly stiff, but this is, you know, a jumbo yarn. So it's going to be a little bit stiffer and not have as much drape naturally. So it stands up a little bit. Um, I do see a question just came in about why is my work curving? Um, one tip I mentioned at the beginning, but I find that happens a lot with this yarn, again, is you just wanna make sure as you finish your stitch, that last loop left on your hook before you begin the next stitch, make sure maybe to give that a little extra tug. Yarns like this with a lot of texture like to stay 
really close. They like to, um, those loops just, you know, you have to actually put a little elbow grease behind them. So just make sure to always pull that loop up just a little bit higher as you go, and that will make it a little bit easier uh, to crochet with and prevent some of that pulling in that can happen with textured yarns. So that is nine rows of single crochet. And then we are going to begin working in rounds. So, so far we've just been doing basic rows of single crochet, nine rows, 11 stitches across. So we're gonna begin round 10. Um, you should have one loop on your hook here at the end of each stitch. Um, so to begin round 10, we're going to start again with a chain one, and then we're gonna turn and at the beginning here, it's going to be just like what we've been doing. We're just going to single crochet in each stitch across. So you go into the first one, and then just continue across. Now at this point, I would go ahead and replace that stitch marker in that first stitch, because we're going to make sure that we can find the first stitch of this round. We're going to go all the way around our square. So we just single crochet, in each of these stitches. We pull up a little bit more yarn here. Again, uh, if you missed the beginning, I'm using Bernat Blanket. It is a super bulky or jumbo yarn. I guess super bulky now. They've added jumbo as its own category. It's seven, this is a six. And I'm just making single crochets right across in a row here. We've begun round 10 of the pattern for the button-up basket. You can see there, I'm working into the last stitch of the previous round, or excuse me, the previous row. But since we're working in rounds, now that I've single crocheted across, I'm gonna go ahead and take that stitch marker out and set it aside. And then I'm going to turn 90 degrees. So normally when we're working in rows, we turn our whole work over back and forth. But right now, since we're working in the round around our square, we're actually going to turn our project 90 degrees and crochet right along the sides of those rows. So we're not gonna chain one or anything like that, but we wanna do nine stitches evenly along the sides. Now you'll remember we worked nine rows, so we'll wanna put one stitch in the side of each row. And working into the edge, I always say, is just as much art as it is science. It's a matter of finding where you like to stitch, stick your hook, where you like the look of the finished project, the look of the finished stitch, and just trying to stay consistent across. So this is the last row that we just made here. This is the row round rather that we're actually working on now. So we don't wanna work into the side of the stitch we just made. Make sure you drop down to that row, uh, row nine that we made at the end of our rectangle. And then I like to try and go under two loops there, right in the side of the row. And then I just go ahead and make a standard single crochet. So that's in the side of that row. Then I'll come down to the next row find a couple loops that I can get my hook under there and make a single crochet. So we're just going to continue working down the side with a stitch in the side of each row. Like I said, working into the size of crochet rows can take a little bit of practice. You just want to, if you can, make sure to stay as consistent in the way that you work into them as you can. So pull up a little bit more yarn here. So we should have nine rows here along the side, or excuse me, nine stitches, because we have nine rows. So there's the last row, the first one I actually made. We'll work right into the side of that. There we are. And then this is where at the beginning, you might remember if you were had joined us uh, at the beginning, I worked into that bottom third loop when I worked into the chain. Now I've got these top two loops to work into, which just creates a way more consistent look on this side. So now I'm going to work right into those foundation chains. We've still got two loops there waiting for us. So I will work into each of those stitches. So there's one, two, three, on across. Oops, looks like I missed a stitch there when I glanced away to grab more yarn. <laughs> there we go. You can always just pull your stitches out if you make a mistake. That's a great thing about crocheting. We Sounds had like um, two questions come through. About
okay. about making their baskets bigger. Ah, yes. Well, I'll tell you what, this one, um, as you make the size, there is a fair bit of math. I would say the easiest way to make this basket bigger would be to double up the yarn and bigger, use a bigger hook or find an even thicker yarn to use. Um, the angles in this one, as you make the sides, are kind of precise. Uh, it took a lot of trial and error. So if you wanted to play with it, you could probably come up with some other sizes other ways. Uh, but unfortunately, it's not super easy to just upsize or downsize this pattern. It's kind of specific. Uh, like I say, although using different sizes of yarns is absolutely a great way to do it. I've seen some people use uh, a four weight yarn with a smaller hook and it makes a really cute smaller basket. So, I, you know, obviously you can do the same thing doubling up or going with a bigger yarn as well. So now we have worked across our foundation chain. So we want to work up the other side. We're just going all the way around that rectangle that we made. So now we work into the other sides of those rows. And once again, nine rows, nine stitches. And you'll notice sometimes I change my, the way I hold my hook. I'm gonna pull that one out. I don't like where my hook went in there. Um, and that is a totally valid thing to do, especially if you're a beginner. I get a lot of questions about, uh, you know, I don't hold my hook the same way you do. I hold my hook like this, or maybe, you know, some other hold. Whatever is comfortable for your hand is fine. As long as you like the look of the stitches that you're getting and your hand isn't hurting, then I say go with it. Go with whatever hand hold works for you. I find that when I'm working with a thick yarn like a Bernat Blanket or even a chunkier one, Sometimes it's easier for me to switch to uh, this hold right here, sort of the overhand or knife hold. Generally speaking, I use a pencil hold, uh, but that's just what I prefer. So however it works for you is fine. So Tamara, on the two sides where we're stitching into the sides of the rows, how many, um, how many single crochets are we doing? Nine single crochets, one in the side of each row. So at the end of this round, you should have a total of 40 stitches. We would have had 11 across the previous row, nine along the side, 11 across that foundation chain, and then nine more up the opposite side right there. So now we know that this is gonna be the outside of our basket. So uh, let's see, did you do two rows before you turned? There are, I'm not sure if I understand the question. There's nine rows of single crochet before we do the big round 10. So at the end of round 10, like I say, you should have 40 stitches all the way around. We've marked the first stitch of this round. So we've worked all the way around the base of our basket and we're ready to begin the sides. So I see there's a question right now. How many skeins do you need to make one basket? You can probably get two or three uh, baskets out of one skein of Bernat blanket, possibly even more. Um, let me check my notes on how many yards I used. It's 75 yards approximately per uh, basket. So I would say you can get at least two baskets out of each skein, which is really fun. All right, so that is the end of round 10. Uh, Allie, were there any other questions I can answer before we go on to the first side? Um, let me just double check. Um, so there's, the pattern says to put a stitch marker on row 11. Yeah, that's what we'll so be doing. So there was a question, okay. So there's okay. a question coming up about that. So uh, Lisa, uh, we'll get right into that in just a moment. All right, well, here we go, let's do it. Uh, so yes, the end of round 10 instructions, have you place a stitch marker in the 11th, 21st, and 31st stitches. Not the rows, the stitches. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull up three more stitch markers here. And this is one of the reasons I love having a variety of these is that I can color code them if I need to. So let's go ahead and make these orange ones. So this is our first stitch. Remember we marked our first stitch at the beginning of round 10. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, nine, 10, Oh my gosh, I must have counted. Sorry, I'm <laughs> trying to read my notes and count at the same time. Bad idea. Let's concentrate on that for a minute. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. There we are. I do know how to count, I promise. So we found our 11th stitch. We're going to go ahead and just put a stitch marker right in there, like so. So now that one's marked. Then we're going to count to the 21st stitch. So that's 11. We've got 12, 13, 14, 15, 
16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21. You can see these are landing in the corners. 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31. There we are. So those are the marked stitches. And you can see that puts one in each corner. And that marks where we're going to begin each side. So this first marked stitch, that's where we will begin side one. Then we'll break our yarn and rejoin to this stitch marker to make side two. Break our yarn, rejoin to that stitch marker, make that side, break our yarn, and then finally the fourth side. And the great thing is that we don't have to break our yarn before starting this first side. We're going to start right there. Um, but you can, uh, like I say, you can just continue working all the way around. It makes it a little bit, a little bit easier. Uh, once again, if you want to change sizes of the basket, the easiest way to do it would be to use a thicker yarn or double up the yarn and a bigger hook. So let's go ahead now and start side one, unless we had any other questions about that. Um, so there was just a couple questions on, did you chain one before, before you started uh, row 10? Yes. Or started, yep. Yeah. At the beginning of round 10, you want to chain one, just like you would when you start any other row uh, up to this point. So you can chain one and then begin that stitch across. I chained one at the beginning of round 10, but then I didn't chain one before I worked into the sides. I just kept on working single crochets around. So there's only the one chain one at the very beginning of round 10. Awesome. Helpful. Okay. Uh, what, sorry, was there another one? Um, Patty wants to know how, what is break your yarn? Uh, that's just another way of cutting the yarn. It's another way of saying cut the yarn. Um, you know, I, I don't know why people say break. It's kind of an old fashioned term, I guess. Um, it's just the way I learned to do it when I was reading other people's patterns. Uh, it just means cut the yarn. So the scissors with your hands, if you're real strong <laughs> and brave, um, however you want to break that yarn, snips, uh, dental floss, blade, whatever works for you. Um, again, I don't know why it's phrased that way. I think it's just because it's succinct. Um, you know, a lot of patterns, a lot of these abbreviations exist because patterns used to have to be printed. We didn't have the internet. And that's the great thing about a blog post is I can go into a little bit more detail and spell all that out sometimes, whereas in a magazine or a book, space is of the essence. So there's a lot of those little abbreviations like that that have just kind of become standard, I guess, in crochet. So let's go ahead and start side one. We're going to start working uh, by working right into that first stitch. But first, we're going to join to it with a slip stitch. That's the last thing we do here in round 10. So I'll put my hook right under those top two loops of our first stitch, yarn over, pull that loop through, and then pull that loop right on through the loop that was on my hook. And that is a slip stitch. And that stitch we are not going to work into. It does not count as a stitch, so to speak, for our round. So what I like to do here, before I go ahead and begin, I'm gonna grab a different color stitch marker, just so I know this is our last actual stitch right here, and this was a slip stitch. I don't want to work into it later. So now we are finally ready to begin side one. Side one begins with row one, and this begins with a really unusual stitch that I love working. I think it gives a really, really great edge and a great look, but it is a little bit trickier. So if you are a beginner, when you see CSDC in the pattern, which stands for chainless starting double crochet, then you can instead just work a chain three, like so, and count that as your first double crochet for the row. Now we talked about how the chain one at a start of a single crochet row doesn't count as a stitch. When you chain three for a double crochet row, that generally does count as the first stitch. So if I were to chain three, depending on the pattern, I might not work back into that first stitch because it would be considered worked already, that it would be considered there's already a stitch there. In this pattern, we're working two stitches in that first stitch, so that would be the first one, and then we'd work the next one in that stitch. Now, the stitch I wanted to use in this pattern originally, and like I say, it's a little bit tougher, but it has a really great look. I'm gonna go ahead and demo it for you now. Again, this is the chainless starting double crochet. And the way it's made, is you pull that yarn up to about the height of a double crochet stitch. So if you don't know what that looks like in the yarn you're using, you can go ahead and make a couple double crochets just so you get an idea of how big that loop should be. 
Then we're going to put our finger right on the top of that loop on our hook so it can't move. No matter when we move our hook around, that loop is staying right where we put it. And then we just yarn over with the loop itself. Then we'll go into that first stitch. Notice I still have that finger holding the loop secure. Yarn over, pull that loop through. I still have a hold of that top loop. So now we've got the loop I pulled through. We've got that big loop wound around our hook and then the top loop that I've secured with my finger. And I will yarn over, pull through that first loop and behind the loop that was wound around the hook. And then I can let go of that top loop and yarn over and pull through those two loops. And that creates a double crochet without a turning chain. And it just has a really great look. It creates a really great edge um, for more experienced crocheters who don't like using the chain three. You can always use this instead. I'm definitely going to show it to you again. So let me go ahead. I'll just go ahead and pull that one out. And it's one of those stitches that sometimes can take a little extra practice. Sometimes still, if I'm working uh, with a fiddly or yarn, I might have to do a couple of them before I get one that I really like to start that row with. But let's go ahead and show it again. This is a chain three alternative to starting double crochet rows or in place of a first double crochet of a row. So what I'm going to do is pull the loop on my hook up to about the height of a double crochet. There's no turning chain first. This is the first stitch of the row. I put my finger right on top of that loop so that it's nice and secure. Go around the loop there with my hook. So let's do that move again. That's probably about the hardest part. Just go right around your hook there. So if you find that there's not enough loop there to get around your hook, then you need to pull that loop up a little higher. If you've got a bunch of space in between your hook and the fabric on that loop, that means your loop is a little too tall. So you can just undo and adjust, easy peasy. Now, with that wound around, we're going to go right into our next stitch, first stitch, whatever stitch we're working into. Here it's that first one. Yarn over, pull that loop through the stitch. We've got that loop we just pulled through. We've got the loop we wound over our hook, and then we've got our starting loop still secured with the finger. Yarn over again, pull through two, yarn over again, and finish the stitch. And there, if I pull it up a little closer, you can see this looks a lot more like a standard double crochet than a chain three would. So what I like to do now is again, use a stitch marker. Let's see. When I grab a stitch marker, then I can go under those top two loops of the chainless starting double crochet, like so. So that way my first stitch is marked and it also makes it a little bit easier to get in there with my hook when I work back into that stitch. There we go. Did we have any other questions about the chainless starting double crochet, Ali? I don't see any, but there's a lot of people who had never done that before and they are really excited. They're, oh, they they're definitely going to start using that. Great. And I do have a separate tutorial for that on the Moogly YouTube channel if you need to see it again um, in a different yarn, a little more close up. Um, you know, working here live and kind of working with my cell phone and other things, but um, we've got some really good tutorials for that out there too. So however you want to make, again, you can do a chain three if you prefer. If there's another double crochet substitute, there's a few different ones out there. Whatever you like to do for your first double crochet, go ahead and work that in the first stitch. Then we're going to work a half double crochet right in that same stitch. So a half double crochet uh, is you know one that you typically learn after a single crochet or double crochet, but it is so fun and such a great stitch. You yarn over, go into the stitch, pull up your loop, and now it looks like you would work a double crochet, but instead you're just going to yarn over and pull through all three of those loops on the hook. And that's a half double crochet, right in between a double crochet and a single crochet in terms of size. Now I'm going to go ahead and take that stitch marker out. We worked all our stitches into that stitch and we've got the first stitch of this one marked. And then we're just going to single crochet in the next seven stitches. So go right to the next stitch and just work a single crochet. And again, a single crochet is just you go in under those top two loops, pull up a loop, yarn over, and pull it through both the loops on the hook. Again, if you find that your project is pulling in a little bit too much on the sides, make sure you just give it that little extra tug on the loop. This is a highly textured yarn, so sometimes it just takes that little extra bit of elbow grease. 
So again, we're starting row one of side one. I have made the chainless starting double crochet and the half double crochet in the first stitch. And then I am single crocheting in the next seven stitches. And it looks like I'm just about there, but I'm going to go back and count since I've been chatting a little bit. We've got our double crochet, our half double crochet, and then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven single crochets. I made one too many. No problem, I'll just go ahead and pull that right on out. There we are. Then we are going to work a single crochet and half double crochet in the next stitch. So I guess I didn't really have to pull that one out, but we wanna do it together. So we'll single crochet in that next stitch and then yarn over and half double crochet right back in the same stitch, like so. Then the last stitch that we're going to work into for this first side, we're going to half double crochet and then double crochet. So a double crochet, yarn over, go into that stitch, pull up your loop, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. So at the end of our first side here, side one, row one, we should have a total of 13 stitches. Double crochet, half double crochet, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven single crochets, and a single crochet and half double crochet in the next stitch, and a half double crochet and double crochet in the last stitch of that uh, side right there. And you can tell we're in the right spot because that next stitch is a marked stitch and that's where we'll begin side two. So that is the end of row one. And I'm just going to take a quick sip of water and <laughs> let you catch up for a minute. All right. <clears throat> so after that, then we're ready to begin row two of side one. And this time I'm going to go ahead and turn because I'm going to begin again with that chainless starting double crochet. Again, if you don't like this stitch, you're not ready for it, that's totally fine. You can just work a chain three instead. Just make sure that when you come back along that you work into the top of that chain three because it does count as a stitch. So we'll start again by pulling up our loop, put the finger on top to keep it secure, wind that loop around our hook, go into that first stitch of the row, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through two essentially, and yarn over and pull through two again. And then I like to put a stitch marker in the top of that one, just makes it a little bit easier to come back and find. And one thing you may have noticed, I've had comments about this before, when I slip my hook out of my loop to you know, be able to use that hand to do other things essentially, I always like to stick my forefinger of my non-hook hand through that loop. This does a couple things. It keeps it from pulling out, of course, and undoing the work I just did but it also keeps it the right direction. Whenever you take your hook in or out of your project, you really wanna make sure if you can that it didn't get twisted. It's very easy to accidentally put a little twist in that loop before you put your hook back in there. And just to get the stitches to lay their best, you want to make sure to put the hook back in there the right direction. And the way you can check that is after you've put your hook back in, give your working yarn a little tug. And if you can see, the section that moves is in front of the hook, then you know you're in the right way. You want it to be pulling back down into the stitch from the front of the hook. So just a little tip there if you need to take your hook in and out of the project. So to continue with row two, we've got our chainless starting double crochet in the first stitch, then we'll work a half double crochet in that same stitch, like so. And then we are going to work a half double crochet in the next stitch followed by a single crochet in that same stitch. So if you think about it, we're kind of mirroring what we did there at the end of the previous row. We're doing those same series of stitches again, but of course coming the other direction. Then we're going to single crochet in the next 10 stitches. So we're just back to single crochets for 10 stitches until we get close to the other end of this side. Now I did see one question come up. Why do you break the yarn or cut the yarn between the sides? Well, it's, um, it just makes this whole thing work a lot better. I'll tell you what, <clears throat> excuse me. I uh, experimented with trying to not have to break the yarn for this pattern, but I do think these sides are going to require it. Luckily, it's just the sides, so it's not too many ends to even at the end here. So let's go ahead and count, make sure we've got our 10 single crochets. I've got my double crochet and half double crochet in the first stitch, half double crochet and single crochet in the next stitch, then I should have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Let's see. Should I get all those stitches in the right spots? 
Yeah. Okay. Just making sure. Oh, I did miss a stitch. I thought I missed a stitch in there. This happens. Hey, we're live, right? It happens to everybody. And this is why it is important to go back and count your stitches sometimes. So let's do that a little bit more together here. We've got our double crochet and half double crochet in the first stitch. I just want to make sure that I haven't missed any. So in the next stitch, I want to work my half double crochet and single crochet. And then 10 single crochets. So let's make sure we're going into that next one. With this fuzzy yarn, sometimes it's easy to miss one. But like I said, that's why it's important to always go back and count your stitches, especially when it's a short number like this and it's not too bad. So we'll get our single crochets in here. And that should take us almost up to the last stitch here. Pull up a little bit more yarn from our skein. So let's go ahead and count and make sure we're on the right track now. We've got our double crochet, half double crochet, half double crochet, and single crochet, and then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten single crochets. Now we're back on track. So to finish up row two, we've got our last stitch here. You can see it's got our stitch marker in it that we put in at the beginning, and we're just going to half double crochet and double crochet right in that stitch. And that's where I really like having uh, that stitch marker in there. If you're having trouble getting your hook in that stitch for whatever reason, you can just give it a little tug. It tells you exactly where those top two loops are. So you can work that half double crochet followed by a double crochet in your last stitch. Like so. There we are. And that is the end of row two. And you can see, let me go ahead and move the stitch marker out of the way here, how we're starting to get an angle. This angle, this side, is going to come out and stick out a lot more than this side. And that's part of the sides and then the way they fold over to work for the button basket. So don't worry, that's what we want the pattern to be doing. So now we're ready for row three of side one. And we're going to start again with a chainless starting double crochet. So I pull that loop up, hold it down with my finger, wind it around my hook, go into that first stitch. Oops, make sure you get under both those top two loops. Pull up your loop, yarn over, pull through and yarn over and pull through to finish that stitch. And again, just going to go ahead and put my stitch marker right in the top there. So to continue row three, then we half double crochet right and back in that same stitch. There we are. And then we are going to single crochet in the next 13 stitches. So on across until there's just two stitches left in this one. So let's keep going here. Hey, Allie, would you mind telling me how we're doing on time? I don't have a clock available on my monitor. Yeah, we're, it's 1.48. Okay, good to know, good to know. Uh, let's zoom ahead a little bit then. I will try and speed up a little bit here. Like I say, these are all, uh, except for the chainless starting double crochet, basically, you know, they're the standard stitches, single crochet, half double crochet, and double crochet. And if you don't want to do that chainless starting double crochet, you can absolutely just chain three instead. So let's make sure we've got our stitches here. We've got our chainless starting, our half double, and then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13 single crochets, and then a half double crochet, or excuse me, a single crochet, I jumped ahead, a single crochet and half double crochet in the next stitch. So we end with a half double crochet and double crochet in that last stitch. There we are. Oops, there we go. So at the end of row three, you should have a total of 19 stitches. Now rows four, five, and six are, uh, well, rows four and five are pretty similar. We are just working back and forth, sort of mimicking what we've been doing here. So I'm going to go ahead and essentially skip ahead to row six, simply because we're running out of time and I wanna make sure that I can demonstrate all the stitches that are used in this. So let's pretend I'm at row six. I am going to chainless starting double crochet in my first stitch here. Oops, came off the hooks, what do I do? Check and make sure, yep, that's the right side. All right, and then I yarn over, go in there and get that down. And I did see a note come up, if the chain three isn't working for you, if it's creating too much of a gap, another alternative you can do instead of the chainless starting double crochet or just a chain three, try chaining two and then just working a double crochet in that first stitch and don't count that chain two as a stitch. 
It creates a little bit, um, a little bit more bulk along the side there, but it shouldn't be too much of a problem and it might be a better look. I like having lots of different alternatives when I'm writing a pattern or crocheting a pattern because not every technique is going to work great for every pattern and it's always good to have some alternatives. So again, we're kind of doing a mock row six here. I've got my chain one starting double crochet in the first stitch. Then what I'm going to do is chain three right away. One, two, three. Then I skip the next stitch and single crochet in the next nine stitches. Now, of course, I don't have quite as many stitches in this row since we skipped the previous two where we were getting bigger and bigger, but you get the idea. So single crochet across for nine stitches should get you about halfway across your previous row. Not gonna count these since I'm sort of fudging it here. There we are. And then once you've got your nine single crochets, we're gonna chain three again. One, two, three. Skip three stitches. One, two, three. And then single crochet in the next 10 stitches and then work a half double crochet and double crochet in the last stitch. That would be the marked stitch. So again, I don't have quite as many stitches here, but for the sake of time, we are going to pretend that I just made 10 single crochets and we're almost there. So then I would just half double crochet and double crochet right in that last stitch, like so. And then what we've done with those chain threes here, those are our buttonholes. So a quick tip, if you can't get a hold of the same size of buttons that I've used in this pattern, or you're using a smaller yarn or a thicker yarn or yarn held doubled, you can adjust the size of these. You can chain and skip fewer stitches if needed, uh, chain you know, fewer here, whatever you need to do to adjust the size of that buttonhole for your project. So that is one thing that is easy to adjust with this. So round seven features another, or excuse me, row seven, features another really fun stitch that I wanted to make sure to show you guys. And that's why I've jumped ahead. This is called a twisted single crochet, and it's a wonderful alternative to the uh, reverse single crochet that you may have seen before. The reverse single crochet is also known as the crab stitch, and it actually requires you to crochet backwards. So normally if you're a right-handed crocheter, you'd be crocheting in this direction, and the reverse single crochet, you're working in the opposite direction. It creates a really great edge, but there's an easier way to do it called the twisted single crochet. And that's what I wanna show you now. What we're gonna do is chain one and turn, or turn and chain one, however you like to do it. And then I'm gonna make sure I've got lots of yarn here available off my skein. I am going to go into the first stitch of the previous row. I'm gonna pull this up a little closer so you can see. Go into that first stitch of the row, just as for a normal single crochet. Pull up that loop. So far, just like a single crochet. Now I wanna make sure at this point that I pull these up a little bit taller here. So I've got some good play in those loops. And then I'm going to spin the entire hook. So you can see here, I'm spinning it counterclockwise all the way around till it's back in position. Then I yarn over and pull through those two loops. Looks a little silly on the first one, but let's do a couple more. We're going to go into the next stitch, yarn over, Pull up our loop, make sure those loops are pulled up nice and high, spin our loop around, our whole hook rather, counterclockwise. Note if you're left-handed, you'll be going the opposite direction, clockwise. Then we yarn over, pull through both of those loops, and that finishes that stitch. I'm gonna do one more before I show you how that edge looks. We're gonna go into that next stitch, yarn over, pull up that loop, pull them up nice and high, Spin your hook, yarn over, and pull through. So if you're having trouble pulling that hook back through, then you want to make sure that you're really giving a good tug on that hook to get those loops up nice and high. Now, you can see here, if I give just that row a little tug, look at that. That looks just like a reverse single crochet, but it's so much easier. There's none of that backwards working. There's none of exactly where do I yarn over and how do I get my yarn over to get it to look great? This is just a really great, easy alternative. And of course, you could do this with any sort of stitch if you wanna add it to your own project. You can do it at the top of a double crochet or um, even taller stitches. Just as soon as you've got those last two loops left on the hook, you give the hook a spin, pull through, and boom. You've got that great, really great finished edge, as easy as can be. 
So to finish off uh, row seven, you would just go ahead and do a twisted single crochet in each, in each stitch and each chain across. So you'll wanna work under the top two loops of each of those chains. This creates a really nice solid edge. And then when you get to the end there, you turn again 90 degrees. Do you remember when we were working around the base for our round 10 and we worked all the way around that rectangle? When we get to the end of this row, we're going to turn again, turn 90 degrees, and just single crochet 12 stitches really evenly right down till we get back to the base of our basket. This is the edge that's going to show on the outside of our basket. So by crocheting to that edge, it just gives us a really nice clean look. I found that 12 stitches worked great for me. If you do this edge here and you find that you only made 11, but it looks fantastic, go with it. If you needed 13 to get that really gorgeous edge, it's fine. When we get to the bottom there, we're just gonna break our yarn and or cut it and weave in our ends and start the next side. So the actual number here doesn't really matter. It's just whatever gives you a really gorgeous edge. So again, since we're a little short on time, I'm gonna just go ahead and pull up the finished basket here and pull it apart a little bit so you can see what that looks like when it's all done here. And I can show you too where to sew on the buttons. Um, again, I did see a question about what if you use smaller buttons, then you'll just wanna chain less, maybe only chain two and skip two. You can try your buttons out in the buttonhole as you're crocheting and adjust as needed. So let's see here, I've got all the buttons I'm done. So this is the right side of our basket. You can see here, we've got our, pull this down. All these sides are essentially the same. After you've made the first one, yes, we've cut our yarn, but then you just join to that next marked stitch and work it exactly as you did the previous one. So once you've made one side, you've basically made them all. And we've got two buttonholes. There should be one in the middle and one at the end. If you are left-handed, you'll have a buttonhole here and a buttonhole here. And then you can put the button on the other side. So if you, again, if you're left-handed, that will be flipped. But you just wanna center your button on the opposite end, the end without a hole in it and then you can assemble the whole thing. The button goes through first, the center button of the previous side, and then that next side comes around and grabs that same button, like so. And again, on your written pattern on the PDF, there is a, uh, a series of pictures that do demonstrate how to do that. So as you crochet across that last row for row seven of the side, You'll crochet your twisted single crochets right across the top there, and then just turn basically 90 degrees. I guess this is an not an added angle, it's not exactly 90 degrees, but you'll turn and just work right along those sides. And then at the bottom there, you go ahead and cut the yarn and just weave in that end. Join to the next stitch of the base, would be right there. Chain one and begin again, just going back and forth. Um, you could try and slip stitch into that next one. I really liked the finished look I got when I broke the yarn, but if you wanna try it without breaking the yarn, go for it. Um, you know, let me know what you think. I like, like I say, I liked it better when I cut the yarn. I just like the finished edge I got with a little better, but it is totally up to you. And then of course you've got a basket that stores flat or when you're not using it. Um, so if you do do a lot of craft shows or something like this, this can be a really great Thing. Uh, you can have it on your table to display your stuff. I actually keep all my blocking pins in mine, so I had to pull it off the shelf to demonstrate with today, but it is a really great thing. And again, for those of you who joined late, go ahead and, uh, you know, feel free to use buttons that maybe, you know, are in your stash that you don't love anymore. I went ahead and flipped these over and I actually have the back of these buttons showing because I really like the look. So I'll go ahead and button this up one more time here. I'll just go ahead. I like to go ahead and gather those two buttons, uh, holes, line them up, pop them right over, right there, put it through. If you don't see the PDF in the group chat, you should have gotten an email, I believe. Allie, do you want to talk to that for a minute? Uh, yes. So there should have been an email that came from Michael's classes. Actually, Katie, do you, can you tell them where the email would have come from uh, that they would have gotten uh, last night? Yeah, absolutely. There was an email that came across last night as a reminder for this class with the link to come and attend and attached to that email, you should find the PDF. Uh, we've also attached it into the chat here as well. 
Um, but if you're still having any trouble getting it, uh, shoot us a message privately and we'll see what we can do about trying to get it to you. Okay. And do we have time for one more tip? Sure. Okay, great. I just wanted to mention um, buttons like this, you can see I sewed it on with the yarn itself. Now for weaving in these ends, you're going to want, since it is a big thick yarn, you're going to want to use a yarn needle with a nice big head in it, right? That, or you can use your hook to try and kind of weave the ends in there, however you like to do it. But for most buttons, a hook like this, or excuse me, a needle like this is not gonna get through those holes. So if you've got a button and you want to use the yarn itself to sew it on, you don't wanna use matching thread, but you can't get that yarn needle through the holes. This is just another button I found in my stash. So it's a nice big one, um, but I wanna be able to make sure you guys can see it to demo with. A really great tip is to take a thinner yarn. This is a worsted weight because it's a great big button, but if I were doing this on a smaller button, I might use um, some crochet thread like Aunt Lydia's or something like that, or even dental floss can be really handy. And then if you stick one end of the yarn through the hole, there we are, I'm going to pull that through for a few inches. And then this end is a little rough so I could trim it up. Or if you were using something like thread and you have a much smaller needle that will fit through the hole, you can use that. Go right into the same hole of the button there. And then, so on one side of the button, I have got a big loop of yarn. And then on the other side of the button, I've got my ends. I want to keep that loop up. And then I want to take the bit of yarn. Let me go ahead and find an end now. Of course, mine's attached to my project. Let's see here. Let's say this is the length of yarn that I want to sew my button on with. If I send that through the loop of the smaller yarn here, get it nice and centered so I don't accidentally just pull one end through. And then I want to, from the opposite side of the button, just start gently pulling that right through the hole. As soon as that's on the other side there, you can see it pulled through really nicely. I can pull that yarn out of the way and then I want to carefully just pull one end of that yarn through the buttonhole and voila, we've got our button thread threaded with our yarn. So then you can do the same thing on the other side and then you can use your yarn to sew your button right to your project. So that's just a handy tip. Anytime you wanna use your yarn with buttons but those holes are just too small for the yarn needle. And I think that's it for our demo. So if you wanna switch back to, <laughs> there we are. Not a good code word for that, right? Um, so yeah, I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. We, um, I tried to share all my best tips and tricks. Um, I know we didn't get quite through the whole thing, but hopefully you'll see it is really some basic stitches um, with a couple of tricky stitches that hopefully will expand the things that you feel comfortable doing in crochet. Um, I know there are tri uh, tips and tricks that I like to use a lot. Um, if nothing else, stitch markers. Stitch markers are just so handy, especially as a beginner. And honestly, even as a professional crochet designer, I use stitch markers nearly every time I crochet because I don't want to count the stitches in every row either, but it's really important that I stay consistent and keep those edges even and don't miss a stitch. So that is my best tip for that. So awesome. Um, well, yeah, yeah thank you so much for everything today. Everybody's loving this class and this project. And we've had a few shout outs that just love your patterns in general. So you. sounds like we had a lot of a lot of big fans today. Um, thanks everyone for joining. Continue to look back at uh, michaels.com backslash classes. We're posting all of our finished videos as well as signups for our upcoming classes. So be sure to check that out. We're adding new ones each day. Um, and we've also got our kids program that is running um, in the afternoon. So if you have little ones at home that you need to keep entertained, we've also got kids classes as well. Um, Tamara, thanks so much for joining us. Everyone have a great day. Thank you so much for having me. Have a great day. Bye. Bye. <laughs>